When I started the knitting factory, you know, I didn't have a family. I had a futon under my desk. I joined a gym around the corner for $19.99 a month so I could go and shower and, and occasionally, you know, use the steam room. I started a club when I was 23 called The Knitting Factory and then I got out of that in 2003 and then I was kicking around this idea of how to mash up a winery with a music venue. I started City Winery with a little bit of the money that I had made out of, out of The Knitting Factory so I was able to get some investors got our lease, started the renovation, and I was able to follow that up with some more money. I convinced all these great world-class vineyards in California and Oregon to ship me grapes, literally 80 tons of fantastic grapes from the West Coast to New York. And of course, I had to pay for all that up front because they thought I was absolutely crazy trying to be the only winery in Manhattan. Our first grapes arrived the week Lehman Brothers blew up. It was financial Armageddon, October of 2008. Maybe the worst time ever to start a new business in Manhattan that was focusing on the luxury product of making wine, putting your label on it. You could own a barrel of wine for $13,000. I had about 150 bankers signed up to make their own wine. And all of a sudden, nobody wanted to put their name on a luxury product. So we had about a couple million dollars of wine in barrel. We had great Pinot Noir from the Willamette Valley, from the Russian River, Riesling from upstate New York. So we had all this great, fantastic wine aging in barrel right after the financial crisis and was just waiting for a, a way to start to, to sell it. We were very nervous that, you know, Lower Manhattan and the United States and the world economy was really not going to recover. When I was talking with the winemaker and we were tasting the wine and it was starting to show and taste really delicious, I was like, David, we gotta start selling this now. I need the cash flow, we gotta get going. Can't we just tap this barrel? And he goes, Michael, you're a stupid American. You can't put pressure on a wooden barrel, it's gonna blow up. But I could try putting it in stainless steel kegs like beer, and maybe we can try it on tap. And next thing you know, 11 years later, 70% uh, of all the wine that we're selling is on tap by the glass. On a busy night, we'll do three, 4,000 glasses of wine in New York City. That's 15, 20 cases of bottles much more profitable, much more environmentally friendly. This really challenging moment led to this great opportunity and now for us one of the most profitable sides of our business is selling wine by the glass. I'm always telling young entrepreneurs, you have to love what you do. I mean, I, I've loved being in the music space and now I love actually the, the craft, the ultimate craft industry is the wine business. I think it's really important to, to love what you do. And when you love what you do with such passion, you, you can keep giving it that extra bit of tenacity that new startups certainly need uh, in order to, to get over that hump and, and reach some form of critical mass and be financially successful.